Okay, so today is January 17th, 2023. I have a, I think a couple clips I'll include in this video where we started working on our, our neglected leaky roof. Um, and we didn't get the shingles on, but we did get the, all the wood replaced and like the roofing paper down and things like that. But then my husband had to work for the next couple days after. And then today, we woke up to an unexpected forecast of rain. So, I am going to try to put a band-aid over that problem so all the new wood doesn't get wet. Uh, until my husband has another day off and we can work on it again together. I'm going to show you what I got. I needed to get a tarp, but our closest Walmart's 30 minutes away. And Ace Hardware's tarps were just too expensive in comparison. So I ended up getting this 3M 10 foot by 25 foot roll plastic. I don't know if this is going to work, but I damn sure I'm going to try. It was a lot cheaper than what I would have paid for the same size tarp. I really only think it's supposed to rain today. And then uh, I think my husband... We'll have to get through today and then he'll have days off and we'll work on it again before the next part of rain. Also had to get some real roofing nails because though this might not be the correct way to do things, we're doing the best with what we can, with the materials we have, with what we can afford. Of course, it's our house and we don't want it to be done shitty, but sometimes you gotta do the best you can, okay? So if you're a roofer out there, I don't need your advice. <laughs> Or your judgment. Okay, thank you. That sounded a little rude, but who cares? If you're a roofer, save it. I should mention I'm some Oscar Heights, but sometimes you gotta suck it up and do what the hell you gotta get done and just don't look off the edge. I guess. So this is what we're working with. Roofing paper This is to... the section I'm trying to get covered back up and then put the big uh, tarp plastic over and we will go from there so so i'll be the first one to tell you that i am the most underqualified to be up here on this roof doing anything but one thing i am qualified at is figuring shit out so no matter what it is no matter how scary or big of a project it is i always will do the research and figure it out like um and if i can't figure it out i'll keep trying until i do so though i may not have any experience up here i'm gonna do my best to figure it out do the best that i can with what i have and if that doesn't qualify you then well I, that doesn't really qualify you but you know what that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> i'm not gonna just sit and twirl my thumbs knowing that all the hard work that did finally get done could possibly get ruined because of the rain. My husband can't do it because he's working. Um, and he'll, by the time he gets home, it'll, the rain will already be here. So I'm going to do whatever I can with what I can to make it work. And, you know, it's going to be a temporary fix just for a day or two. But I'm going to put my best in it and I'm going to try to do a good job. And there's no, there's no, like, hurdle too big. You know, if you want to do something, even if it's scary... Or even if you're fucking scared of heights. Or even if um, you've never done it before. You can figure it out. You know, that's how you learn to do new things. Gain different skills. And I'm sorry, something like this, it's not going to be a skill that is wasted. You know, um, even if it's just the confidence to take a risk. Like, I mean... The first couple times I got on this roof, I, I couldn't even get off the ladder sometimes because my anxiety would just take over. And now I'm up here by myself. I'm home with the kids. You know, like, I'm taking a lot more risks than I normally would. But I'm going to get off here because it's starting to get a little hot and I'm running out of time wasting it talking. I'm going to get this done. So I just kind of worked my way on through I think there was only like three or four rows I had to do anyways and I got all those nails tapped in everything seems pretty secure compared to where we were starting at um 
So it felt nice. It felt nice to get that part completely done. This is probably a third of this half of the roof. Um, and then hopefully we'll just kind of keep working on through the next time we get up there to work on it. Okay, so I'm almost done. So I figured I'd turn the camera back on and talk for a minute. So I'm taking these, what are these things called? Plastic cap nails and going back over this uh, roofing paper because when they started, we didn't have these when they put the paper on. They used a, a thick headed nail. So this is kind of the in view. Now I'm out here putting up to tools and I think an extension cord and the rest of that roofing felt paper or asphalt. I don't know what the hell it's called. That paper. Um, and I'm just right, kind of picking up so tools around the yard. This is kind of like my berry section-ish. I don't know. This is another little section of the yard. I have a, what are those? Muscadon Vaughn. This one I planted last season. This one is a blackberry vine. I thought it was dead and it ended up coming up the very late summer. Um, I have one there. I'm eventually spread them all the way to here. This is raspberry. I'm going to do the same. This is my asparagus patch. Excuse the dog poop. I just finished wrapping up this project. Um, I had this log that had been too long for probably three months, but I had <laughs> the log sitting here anyways. So I just went ahead and cut it to size. So I have that completed. This is all asparagus. Um, and then I have four blueberry bushes. One's really small right there where that stake is. This was supposed to be blueberry, but it ended up being something different. I think it might be a blackberry. I'm not sure. And then I would also like to do like a bigger log raised bed and do strawberries right here. You know, I decided what a great day to show the starting point of the garden. Before I start any seeds, things go pretty fast. So, this is the start of what I hope to be my large in-ground garden. I did grow a couple things on that side over there and a couple scragglers over here, but nothing that produced. Um, I did get a couple squash and radishes out of it. Oh, and I did get sweet potatoes. I did get some things, but not the volume of this area's worth. Whenever I did mark this area out, I did try to think about but I eventually envisioned this space to be. So while we have a blank slate, I'm gonna kind of explain. I grew very few things here last year, but nowhere near filling up the whole volume. I really fought a lot of the grass um, because I thought I could, I don't know what I thought, but it didn't work out. We're gonna do things a better way this year. I would like to do like an arch trellis or some kind of arch like entryway right here in the center and I haven't completely decided all of the different things I want to do in here, but I definitely want, I want variety. I want different like cool curves and, and I just want it to just be like enchanting. I want this to be like an experience to walk through the garden. Um, but I also will be doing that the most cost effectively. I do want to do some type of fencing around it just because we did get to have a few things that got mowed down by deer and rabbits. So that is something I am going to have to think about. Animals won't stay here. Last year I did that section over there as like my cut flower garden. And it did really well. But I think this year I'm going to mainly focus on doing a bigger cut gar flower garden up closer towards the house. I have just more space up there too. And I think it'll be beautiful to like see it more than it, it being right here in the back of the yard. Um, I do want to get more bees in the spring, but that's its own thing. I need to kind of put my head down and really do a lot more research before I try again because I did make a lot of re rookie mistakes. But I kept them until probably, I think two months ago, so maybe like September. Uh, before they finally all died. But anyways, I don't know what I'm going to plant here. Maybe more flowers. Then maybe I should name this the chaos garden. Okay. So this is another kind of starting point. This one's a little more, got, has more action going on than just the open 
grass up there and then just for reference that's the where the asparagus patch and uh berries and stuff are so i have this gazebo eventually i want to put metal on the top um and then i have these two raised beds right now i have onions and i did have beets growing around the edges but they've gotten killed back a couple times with the frost over here same i've had lettuces and spinaches and carrots a few scragglers left going but believe it or not this is like the first time i've had success with carrots yes well i did have some more growing earlier on but the kids picked all of those then right here if you see that small little green leaf that is a comfrey root that i got from one of my friends she was courteous enough to give me that i would like to take these pallets and if you can kind of envision the way this one looks but all the way down that's kind of my plan and then i also wanted to take a board and just cover this empty hole and then make these two really long raised garden beds you can kind of see ah see that they're probably i would say about 50 feet long and then i think i'll probably do tomatoes and peppers primarily through right here and then maybe a couple things and that ends today's video um ending it showing you this beautiful sunset um thank y'all for watching please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification also leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for that in ground garden y'all have a good one thank you bye